Hi, I'm Kathy Bissell. Welcome to the Golf Show 2.0. You're not going to believe who we have today. Kind of like the Van Gogh or the Monet or the Norman Rockwell of golf painting. Gary, why don't you go ahead with the introduction? Well, we've got the famous Linda Harto, and I'm dressed for the occasion. I'm wearing uh, dogs playing poker. Love it. Great painting as a shirt. Mm -hmm. So I could show what Linda, what real art's supposed to look like. Uh, she okay. painted numerous golf holes. She's painted just about every hole at the Masters worth painting. Some of them number numerous times. Many times. U.S. Open, she she paints them all. Linda Harto, the famous artist. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So tell us what you were painting before you stumble into this golf gig. Uh, mostly landscapes. Um, that's, I think, my first love always has been. But I have painted uh, equine portraits, uh, people portraits, buildings, just about everything. Flowers. What, what kind of landscapes did you like? Like desert, river, ocean? Didn't matter. <laughs> I had all of it. I think I did desert scenes. I did seascapes. Everything. I, I did too many things, I think. <laughs> did you did you travel to do those? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, sure. Uh, at one point, I thought I was going to be an equine artist, but uh, golf won out on that, which is good. Tell us and about how that happened. The, the master's people stumbled upon you and helped, yeah. to, helped redirect your course. Tell us how that happened. <laughs> Uh, and, well, this was in the early 80s, and I was kind of looking for a niche in the art world because I did so many subjects. I did a lot of commission work, so I was used to working with people to do whatever they seemed to want, within reason, obviously. It had to be something I liked. But um, anyway, I, was, I always have loved horses. I have horses. I ride, you know, since I was little. So I thought I'll jury into the Academy of Equine Art and see if I can do a you know a career with that. I had some commissions. I did the Charleston Cup, which was a steeplechase. Uh, some portraits of Arabian horses, some polo scenes. And anyway, about that same time is when the pros at Augusta approached me. They had seen some of my landscapes in a um, gallery in Hilton Head. Oh. And they asked me if I could paint a golf course. And I said, sure. You know, <laughs> I didn't think much of it. I, I um, hope you said it more confidently than that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just said, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, my father had been an avid golfer all his life. So, you know, I was familiar with the, the golf world, basically grew up with it, but uh, never really played much myself. But um, anyway, so I did one for them in 1984, the 13th Hall at Augusta. Oh. And we made prints. I had never done a print before at that time. And they took the painting, the pros, and they had a friend who had a commercial printing company in Augusta. And they made prints. So I signed them all, limited edition. I think they sold for $50. <laughs> 1985 Masters, and they sold out. Phew. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's true. If I had one of those, what, what would it go for now? Well, that depends, because they were printed with commercial inks. And if they were exposed to light, they're all blue now. Oh, nice. So they may not be worth anything much. <laughs> But if they have been kept in the dark, they might be worth maybe $1,500 or so. And some of them I actually drew on them. I did pencil remarks on the actual prints. So those would be worth a little more. But um, so anyway, that started my experience with the um, golf world. And it definitely won out over the equine world. <laughs> 
Well, so. there are a lot of people in, uh, particularly in Great Britain, uh, they like to have their horses and dogs and cattle and everything like that painted. And there, there used to be a, a huge demand for that. I don't know that there is in the United States, but it used well, to be uh, in Europe. There is kind of, but as I discovered since since I went to a couple of the academy shows where I would interact with the clients, basically, potential clients, their attitude was like, if it wasn't their horse, they weren't interested. <laughs> right. But, you know, that's pretty narrow-minded. <laughs> and, but when I was doing golf paintings, it didn't matter if they never set foot on the course. They loved it. So that was like, okay, you know, this, this is, this is good. I like this. So did that become, uh, did you paint a, a different hole, a new hole every year for Augusta? Is that how that happened? Uh, yeah, we did. We started, well, like I said, with the 13th, then I did the 16th, then I did the 18th and then I got involved with a person in Scotland who became my agent for a number of years uh -huh. after going to um, a PGA show in 1988. And that was my first PGA show. <laughs> but it really opened up my eyes to the potential because there was just nothing there that was even close to what I was doing. Right. Yes. And that's how I got connected with Mr. Bob Pringle in Troon, Scotland. And um, I went over there in 1988 for the first time. He took me all over Scotland. And he was a, a golf antiques dealer, well-known worldwide. So I got quite an education <laughs> of all the famous golf courses, you know, the history of golf, Scotland, it was quite the thing. And, and he, at the end, he took me all over up to Royal Dornick and then down to St. Andrews and put me in this bed and breakfast and left me there for a week, <laughs> which was great. You know, I just got to experience the town and walk the course and just be part of the scene for a whole solid week. I couldn't go anywhere, obviously. <laughs> but um, that was my introduction to golf in Scotland. And then he promptly, well, let's see, I painted uh, the postage stamp. Yep. And then the next year, 1989, was the first, my first British Open that I actually went to. And I had two paintings. I had the 17th hole and the 8th postage stamp. And from that, I got a commission from the RNA to do the whole British Open rotation. Wow. So Bob promptly went over to the U.S. and sold the same idea to the USGA. Yeah. And I started the U.S. Open Series in the same year, 1990. Well, that's handy because they change courses every, yeah. every year. So you have a, a new subject each time they have a tournament versus uh, Augusta National because they have yeah. the tournament there all the time. Yes. Uh-huh. When you paint a hole, do you need to be there in person for a while? Do you just take photographs? Yeah. Or yeah. in the case of the Masters, I think the smart play would be, yeah, I'm going to have to play the course three or four times first before <laughs> I can paint a thing. Well, they didn't have to worry about me in that respect because I wasn't going to play. But I, <laughs> I'm an avid watcher, let's put it that way. And I always <laughs> have been. I love to watch the game. I think it's an incredible game. And uh Anyway, no, um, where was I? Let's see. Well, do, do, you take, do you go to the hole and take pictures or and hang out there? Or yeah. how, how do you prepare? Well, I, I visit the whole course, obviously. And, yeah. But, you, you know, in most courses, there's holes that you know are more prominent than others in people's, you know, idea of the course. And I like to get a painting or an image that I think is going to be um, characteristic of the course, give you a kind of a feeling of where you are. 
So it has to do all of those elements. Uh, so sometimes that's easy and sometimes it takes a while to figure out exactly what hole or what view that might be. I, I think the last time you and I talked, uh, you said you'd painted the 13th hole to master seven times. Is that still the leader? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the 12th hole is a this close second. Done that one about four or five times. I've and done over 25 paintings there. Yeah, weren't there two holes at Augusta you ha you haven't painted? Oh, well, a lot on the first nine. I have. Yeah, oh, that's right. And then the two on the back nine is the 14th and the 17th because yeah. they're sort of the least recognizable. Did, did you ever have to go? Did you ever go to a British Open course and you wanted to get some get a good look at the hole and you stand there for three days and it's pouring <laughs> rain? Did you ever have problems waiting for the weather to clear to, to get a good oh. look? Tell us about that. Yeah, every time I went, I, I went most every year. Uh, and I usually like to go August, September, sometimes as late as October. And uh, I always schedule at least two weeks and a week per course, depending on how many I was going to try to, you know, get reference work for because of the weather mainly. Yeah. It's some of the coldest I've ever been in my life is on course <laughs> in Scotland. I bet. <laughs> Layers, layers. But, you know, when you're out there at dawn, whew, it can be really cold. There wasn't one specific course where you just had such bad weather for three days, you, you couldn't stand it? <laughs> well, Turnberry, I had quite a time with Turnberry. I think every time I went there, it was a struggle. But I usually would end up getting something enough to work from. You know, I just had to keep at it and go every day and just whether you just had to go and be there because it could be Wait. like two minutes. The sun could come out. It's an incredible scene you've never seen in your life. When you take yeah. pictures, are you taking with a digital camera so that you can then transfer them to yeah. a computer and blow them up bigger so that you can see them? Or do you do yeah, the old fashioned? Okay. I, well, you know, it morphed into digital, obviously. I used to carry a the lead bag with 40 rolls of film in yeah. it. But I, I always carried two cameras and I had a um, like a wide angle and then a telephoto zoom. So I did overall pictures with the wide angle and the smaller zoom. And then with the bigger one, I take detail shots. So I could do a hundred shots on one hole for one you know, one capture of one scene at one moment. I could go through a lot of film. So when I switched to di digital, which I had to really, I didn't want to, I don't like change, but <laughs> like a lot of us, <laughs> I uh, had to switch because the films disappeared that I was working with. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah. The, the popular films became too saturated with color and I couldn't get a range of values and they were just awful. I, I just had a hard time. So I had to switch to digital. And then I realized, gosh, I can take a whole lot more pictures now. Yeah. <laughs> There's one little card, you know, and it carries all those images. And I thought, wow, this is cool. <laughs> How, how long when you actually start painting? Well, there's two questions. You must have a lot of green paint. But when you start <laughs> painting, how long does it take you to, uh, to really finish the hole to your satisfaction? Um, most of them take three months, uh, some up to six, eight months, depending wow. on how big they are, because some of the ones I do are quite large. Do you work in mm -hmm. oils? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so I mean, you, it, it could be the other. So you've yeah. done all, you've painted all four major championships. How about the Players' Championship done in Sawgrass? Have you done that course? Uh, no. <laughs> Come well, on it's down. not a major until they until Linda Harto christens it. What's That's going right. on? 
Well, I'll have to tell have to tell a tour to get with it. Get with <laughs> I the program. Did much with the PTA. I really couldn't fit that much into my year. I mean, if you're doing yeah. the Masters and then the British Open and then the U.S. Open every year, plus doing all the merchandising, going to the tournament, working all week, I didn't have time. I only did one Ryder Cup. I did the country club in 99, but I, I just, it was too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. by the way, yeah, the, the amount of courses you've painted is stunning and people can get a vague idea how much if they go to uh, your website, harto.com yes. and they can get a look at your work. Let's say uh, this is hypothetical. Let's say you're being inducted into some kind of art hall of fame and you have to submit two paintings that they're going to put on display at this ceremony. Which two are you going to pick? Oh, God. <laughs> I know. I knew that'd be a good one, a tough one. <laughs> I don't know. I it's like picking your two favorite children. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard to say. I, you know, I have a great love of Scotland and Ireland and the naturalness of those courses. And then you've got the extreme of Augusta where it's otherworldly, you know, it's not it's a different kind of natural it's a supernatural yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to describe it yes it's it's definitely otherworldly that green it just glows the whole place yeah. glows you, you, when we talked before you said you had a little trouble at first adjusting the golf courses until you visualize the grass as, as skin uh could you kind of right. explain that to what to us right. layman who uh, you know, I've drawn some excellent stick figures, but I'm not really much of a painter. <laughs> well, when you think about landscape, um, most landscape, you never see the actual contour of the land. It's always got stuff on it, grasses, plants, yeah. stuff. And golf is different because the fairways and the greens are skinned down to the contour of the land. So you're actually seeing the skin of the land. And once I just rethought grass to skin, it worked. <laughs> I was able to describe it in the way you actually see it because, I mean, a green has got the most sensuous, beautiful contours to it, you know, and the way the light hits it is just gorgeous. If you just isolate that one bit and think about it in those terms, so, yeah, so it became a focus, definitely. And of course, any golf painting, the focus is on how do you play the hole? And it usually, oh, yes. you know, the second shot or if it's par three, you're still focused on that flag and that green. So you have to, you have to see the hole as a golfer would play it. And then you have to yeah. see it to me as a work of fine art you know the con the composition the lighting whatever makes it exciting to paint as a work of art and you do a very good very good job of that and sometimes people whether they're photographers or artists they don't seem to capture the person on you know being on the golf course you don't get that feeling from them but I noticed from your paintings that I got the feeling that I was there or very close to there. And yeah, the yeah, one. I had, I had kind of an epiphany when I was in Scotland and I had just read the book Golf in the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Are you all familiar with that? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and being over in Scotland, you sort of get these feelings anyway. When you're out there, you get the sense of otherworldly time, you know? And I realized it was sort of the metaphysical part of golf. And then I realized putting people, actual players in the image would change that feeling. So from then on, I never put another person in a painting. <laughs> and some of the earliest paintings I did had players in them. And later I digitally had them digitally removed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
because I, you know, if you have the people in there, the painting becomes a narrative. If there's no people there, yeah. you put yourself there. And then you can convey that feeling uh, that you wanted them to feel like as if they are there. One, that, one particular painting I saw that, that uh, had the feeling of being right there was a painting of 11 at Augusta with 12 in the background. Mm -hmm. And I kept looking and looking and I went, okay, this is from standing in the fairway, which none of us ever get to do. So it was interesting to see that that's what it looks like if you're, instead of being behind some ropes, you get to walk out a little farther and you see different contours of the ground. It was, it was a whole right. different perspective. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and also, you, you know, when you're watching it on TV too, you don't get the elevation. You don't right. feel it like you do when you're there. Right. And just like you said, that particular vantage, you don't get that if you're on the other side of the ropes. Right. So, so I, I enjoyed that one particularly just for that reason. Not yeah. that I didn't enjoy the other ones, but I that was just a particular view that I hadn't had the pleasure of seeing. Well, that's one of the things about painting golf landscape is that you are in play. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm photographing, I always have to be aware of what's behind me and who's coming up on the tee and get out of the way. <laughs> And that's yeah, so nice it's nice because I get to pretend I hit a drive in the fairway on your painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should, if you're painting from the angle of the rough, I'd be a lot more realistic <laughs> for me. Well, sometimes I do. You know, it just depends. But, but I don't know. I'm always trying to create the ideal, I guess. And I get criticized for that sometimes because cold courses are brown and they're this, you know, and that. But I like, you know, it used to be when I went to Scotland every year, some years I wouldn't go because I knew just watching the tournaments that, that everything was brown. Yeah. So they have years that they just don't have the rain. Yeah. And it's, there's no wildflowers, there's no rough. I don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a waste of my time. You want that nope. you want that romance factor in the painting and brown, <laughs> even though it's realistic and it's just as fine to play off of. It just doesn't give the the viewer that that, feel, that romantic fine. feeling. Yeah, a concrete building is realistic, but I don't want to paint a concrete building. You know, I, I know. Hey, when Linda, I can, you, can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the uh, the art academy? I know you're involved in yeah. that, and most of us know nothing uh, about that. Fill us in briefly, please. Yeah, that was an idea we had uh, after Golf Digest had had a series of um, kind of golf art fairs at Pinehurst where they invited all the known golf cart, uh, artists at the time to get together and exhibit work and um, maybe sell something, you know, who knows. But, um, of course, we were all together and we thought, well, we ought to organize <laughs> So from that, we decided, and I always thought it was a good idea because it's, it's since golf art is sort of on the fringes of the game of golf, it's not really part of it, but it is. Uh, it would be a way to co connect collectors with the artists doing the work that one day possibly would be collectible. Yeah. Well, yours is already collectible. <laughs> Thankfully, 38, 38 years of doing anything will, will help. <laughs> is, is, there a, is there a separate website? Does Academy have yeah. its own website? And if yeah. so, what's the name? Academyofgolfart.org. Mm -hmm. We Excellent. have about 15 members right now, and we try to do shows. And um, we just recently got a new... Um, president who is uh, going to be really good for the organization and really bring it to another level. And, we're, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm sort of on the back end of it now. I help form it, but I'm ready to hand it over for somebody, you know, with new ideas, and more energy. 
<laughs> yeah. are, are you going to have a, is there going to be a new Linda Harto painting at, um, of the masters this year? And also what, what are you, what are you going to be painting this year? Um, I've got a, about three potential commissions right now that I don't mention until they sign the dotted line. I so I just finished one for a client, but mostly right now I'm doing, I'm not, you know, I stopped doing the U.S. Open in 2014. That was my 25th year. Wow. Was a good time to stop. And I kind of quit tournament work then. So I don't go to the masters now. I don't do work for them. I do some work for them, but not like I did where I'd mm -hmm. stood there in the merchandise shop and sold paintings all week. <laughs> I don't do okay. that. Um, but mostly now I'm doing private commissions for clubs um, and individuals. And that keeps what's, me busy. What's something you've recently completed? I just did one of uh, Pebble Beach, and I did one of Glenview in Chicago for yes. they had the an amateur a couple of years ago, and I did something for Jupiter Hills. I've done some corporate work with um, our RSM. I did three paintings okay. of Sea Island. I bet that was pretty. Yeah. So. You know, I'm busy enough. I was way too busy before when I was trying to do all those tournaments. And I like this a lot better at this time in my life is just to, you know, have uh, more time to not. Do now, you, you, went to, you went to the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did you select that as a place to go? Uh, well, I got a scholarship there. Well, that, yay. <laughs> but, you know, I also knew it was one of the top uh, art schools in the country. Yeah. At that time. I could have gone just about anywhere when I graduated from high school, but I chose to stay. I was in Louisville at that time. I stayed in Louisville and went to the University of Louisville. And then through them, I went to Skowhegan School of art and design which is a main summer school and okay. from there i won the scholarship to go to the artist <laughs> so i said okay terrific oh yeah so i went there so about six years all together wow and then a I lot went, of training yeah after that i went and basically i just started painting um for art fairs Okay. I just wanted to deal directly with the public. I didn't like the art, the gallery scene. And I was just wanted to make a living. So you have to kind of paint what people want. Yeah. You mean like dogs playing poker? No. Because <laughs> that's what people want. <laughs> Back in the 70s, people wanted Americana scenes. Yes, and they I did happy with that because I love landscape. I love the old barns and old houses. So I'd go out into the country and I'd find subject matter and I painted a lot of things like that. And it was it was very successful. I made a living. I've made a living from art since I was in school. So it's hard to do. Congratulations, really. <laughs> it is hard. It's time, time for our shameless plug. It's our shameless plug. Subscribe now. It's free. You will get no emails. <laughs> Nothing will happen to you. It just helps us. And uh, click on like because our stated goal, I say it every week, we're trying to get enough viewers so we can meet our goal of 17 cents profit. I know that sounds out of reach, but that's what we're aiming for. We like to aim high. <laughs> so, even though you didn't paint dogs with playing poker, Linda, we still think you did a pretty good job. You obviously never really had a job because you're doing what you love. That's that's the I best way to go. I have had very little experience with actual jobs my whole life. 
Tell us, tell, us, tell us the best golf shot you you ever hit in your life. The most memorable shot you ever hit. I know you didn't play a lot, but um, well, I don't. The, the, hmm. My late husband and I played on um, the Himalayas course in Scotland, yeah. and I beat him. Bingo. <laughs> I was pretty good with the putter. <laughs> That's impressive. Well, putting putting is a lot like painting. You have to have that eye to see to see yeah. the break. You know, Ben Crenshaw is a pretty decent artist, and he designs golf courses. And I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> oh, I, I agree there, kind of. Yeah. Uh, if you want to look at, you know, if you're people watching want to look at the website, there's a lot of. A lot of things on uh, the website that are kind of interesting. You can see a painting in progress. And we do a lot of these uh, guess the winner contests every, you know, during the tournament season. And you can win a free print. You have to sign up for the email. But, you know, that's that way you get the email that says guess the winner. So there's lots of interesting stuff to look at there. Well, I would say the interesting things are the, the the paintings and the prints that you have, and your price ranges go from on your on your works uh, about under a hundred dollars to into the multiple thousands for the original painting. Isn't that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, we okay. do all kinds of custom uh, sizing and treatment to canvas prints. We can have it textured. I mean, whatever you all can dream up, we can pretty much make. <laughs> and there's not many places where you can do that anymore. We'll frame it for you. We'll custom size it, whatever you want. And it will be beautiful. I guarantee that. It will be high quality. We only do high quality stuff. We don't do El Chifo. Well, everybody should check out your work at harto.com. Yeah. And have fun, and you can check out the uh, the golf Academy, the Academy of Golf Art website also. Mm -hmm. You can see some of Linda's works in the background in her room there. Um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a privilege to have you on today. Thanks for sharing some of your some of your anecdotes with us. We enjoy, we appreciate it, and thanks for <laughs> thanks for those paintings because they're you can look at it, it it takes you there. You feel like you're at the course without having to go. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for appreciating my work. I really, it makes me feel good. 